Let's go to our Alex Diarmas at the news desk. Alex, apparently you knew, you know somebody whose parents are missing? Uh, yeah, Lynn, it's not something you want to say, but um, it's true. It was uh, uh, someone I went to high school with, and she reached out to me on social media as soon as she saw what was happening because her parents lived in this building. Uh, I spoke to her on the phone a short time ago. Uh, she says she's hopeful, and she's just praying a lot right now. Take a listen. But Jenny, if, if, if I know that finding words during this time must be nearly in, impossible, but can you kind of take me to the beginning? When was the last time you spoke to your parents? So I was texting my mom yesterday, and then I called my dad yesterday. Um, they were just, uh, my mom was at work, my dad was running errands. Um, Everything was fine. Um, this morning I woke up, I just happened to wake up at like 5.30 and I saw that I had a text message from a friend like letting me know the news and asking if that's the building that my parents live in. To which then I opened the article and it was, it is the building that my parents live in. Um, I immediately called them. Their, both their phones went straight to voicemail. Um, so then I called the next person that I knew that has an apartment there that I've known them, family friends of mine that I've known forever. Um, so I called them and they picked up um, and, you know, they, they basically sort of, they told me the news. They, like everyone else, they don't really know much. Um, mm -hmm. or at the time, they didn't know much either. Um, and I, I was on the line with my brother as well, um, who's actually, uh, he's in Germany now, so he's having to fly back now home. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I really, I, I'm really, really hoping that they're just under the debris and, you know, they're maybe unconscious um, and they just maybe just need medical attention, obviously. Um, but I, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm holding on to hope. I really am. I'm hoping that, you know, even if it takes a couple of hours, a couple of days, they do find them. Um, and I'm just, I'm very just desperate to know what's, what's, what's happening. It's just crazy to see the place that you, I, like I walked there and I drove in there and I, you know, I went to the pool there and all these things, like I did all those things every day and to see it in the conditions in which they're at now, it's just, it's baffling. Like it's insane to see it the way it is now. I have, I have no words. Oh, yeah, and I'm, and I'm just, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm part of why I'm doing this mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I just, if anyone, uh, and I know I, I sent you my photo, if anyone sees them, whether they made it out of the rubble and they're just like unconscious and they're just not yeah. aware of like their surrounding and then they see them, please, you know, or anyone that you see in that area that seems like, you know, they may need help, like offer your help and be there for them. And so Jenny actually lived in that building and that's what she was describing, that it's so hard to see those images now after she walked those hallways. She lived in one of those units. She went to that pool. She parked in that garage. And what Jenny is feeling this morning or this afternoon by this time, uh, so many others are feeling right now. She did call that number that we've been telling you about all morning long. And if we can show you that number one more time, this is the number you call if you know anybody that has not been accounted for just yet. That number is 305-614-1810. Now, Jenny's parents, Mercy and Ray, Mercy and Ray Urgeis. Mercy and Ray Urgeis, just two people still missing this afternoon. And as you heard her, she's holding on to hope. Craig and Lynn.